Hello, my name is Jo Lambert and today I present some news on psoriasis and diet. I am an IPC counselor, but today's work is mainly the work of Linda Griene, a postdoc in my lab. You are what you eat, is what she says, and uh, there is some scientific evidence for that. And why tackle psoriasis with diet? From the physician, physician's point of view, it might be very interesting because he or she can treat obesity-related comorbidities in psoriasis. From a patient's point of view, it might raise engagement in managing uh, their disease. And from a scientific point of view, diet impacts definitely on what happens in a skin lesion. And this is also very new research that is ongoing. So you are what, how, when, why, where you eat, what does science say? Let us go through with some um, articles that we bring forward here. This is a case of a 40-year-old woman who showed improvement in her psoriasis following a very low-calorie ketogenic diet, which was initiated to restore her response to adalimumab, and it worked. Here we see another study by the same researchers who show that a great reduction in weight through an aggressive ketogenic diet, again, also reduces PASI scores in overweight and obese patients. Again, another trial with low caloric diet in overweight patients show that, again, psoriasis improves in terms of PASI, but also in this case in terms of dermatology life quality index scores. We all know that a Mediterranean diet is beneficial for many metabolic diseases, probably because it contains a lot of antioxidants and anti antioxidants are needed to dampen the aryl hydrocarbon pathway. Here, a study showed that severe the disease severity of psoriasis could be correlated to such diet that you can uh, see the details of in the next slide. Here you can see the typical constituents of a Mediterranean diet and how it relates to psoriasis in terms of PASI scores and CRP inflammation parameter. We see that the use of olive oil has a negative correlation, so that's good, with absolute PASI, as does the consumption of fruit and vegetables, primarily through the antioxidant uh, effect. So the interest in what you eat has led to many trials over the last years, here nicely summarized in a recent review by Pona and colleagues from the group of Feldman. But still, what does it really mean? So this review says low calorie, caloric diet improves PASI scores. Uh, although low caloric diet was unsuccessful in maintaining disease remission when patients discontinue their treatment, their medical treatment. So dietary changes alone do not cause a large effect in psoriasis, but may become an important adjunct to current first line treatments is what we summarize from literature. And a little jump to gluten, because many patients ask this, um, Based on the research of Michelson, a connection to gluten sensitivity is made in psoriasis patients. Here shown that a gluten-free diet can have a positive impact at molecular level in the skin. You see here transglutaminase and um, KI67 proliferation are dampened when gluten are removed from the diet. Another interesting type of fasting is, of course, the natural fasting in the Muslim society, the Ramadan fasting. And um, so we don't know really it's, if, it's really, if it really is what you eat, but maybe it also matters when you eat. And, you know, in Ramadan, according to recent research on fasting, one might confirm that when you eat, when you eat is of importance uh, as well. We see a significant decrease in PASI scores after Ramadan fasting. This article was a bit more complex because it also looked at whether um, concomitant treatment had an effect. And of course, being on an IL-17 blocker, blocker will also decrease PASI scores after Ramadan. Uh, so it, there is a positive correlation with, with the treatments, of course, as well. 
So the idea of gluten and celiac disease and fasting sparks interest in our research lab to go further into this matter. And we started a modified intermittent fasting protocol in a group of psoriasis patients through a open randomized crossover controlled pilot trial. So Linda, uh, our biochemist and postdoc, saw during her PhD that intestinal inflammation impacted the severity of skin lesions in the imiquimot model she was studying. And this sparked her interest to see if the brain gut skin axis could be impacted by a diet in psoriasis. Here you see the hypothesis of our newest mango trial, um, where we propose that an inflamed leaky gut can be alleviated with a fasting diet, which would eventually lead, after a few weeks, to improvement in psoriasis lesions. This is the hypothesis and this is the setup of the trial where you see that we use a crossover design within the same patient group. And we look at clinical uh, readouts, biochemical readouts, but also quality of life patient reported readouts. The study is still ongoing, but here you see the two groups, intervention versus control, um, PASI scores, you see, you see skin barrier, uh, no differences, uh, weight also hardly a difference. Uh, you can appreciate the characteristics of about 10 patients in each group. Some very preliminary findings. Subjective experience from the patients, how did your skin improve since the last time, was uh, significantly reported to be better at week 6 and week 12 in the fasting group. So that's reported from a patient point of view. When the physician looked at PASI scores at week 0, 6 and 12 weeks, the fasting group significantly improved in PASI score. Not so much in BSA, but definitely in uh, scaling thickness uh, and erythema of the lesions. Participants also scored pruritus. There was no difference uh, noted between fasting and control, but um, in the fasting arm, itch improved significantly while fasting. So at uh, week 6 and 12, the uh, itch was significantly improved. Furthermore, we want to also measure metabolic parameters that you can read here. And what we see is that BMI, weight loss and waist circumference uh, loss was significantly more in the fasting group, which is quite logic. But it should be noted that many patients carried notorious corona kilos and with the holidays, many patients admitted they often compensated for feelings of depression on the non-fasting days. So our uh, fasting regimen is two days of fasting uh, of 500 kilocalories and the, the other days they can eat normal. So future perspective, uh, we still have to finish uh, several analyses like the quality of life, uh, biochemistry on tight junction proteins that we also measure, also do some uh, right statistics. We will focus on microbiome. We hope with also with this talk to further develop a network nationally and internationally who might uh, want to do the same in their patients. And of course, funding uh, for follow-up trials, we are also looking for, for instance, um, is it ethical if we can prove that diet helps? Is it ethical to impose this on patients uh, before they get a reimbursement of an, of an expensive treatment, for instance? So in conclusion, modest improvement uh, with our intervention um, and uh, other interventions uh, with regard to diet. We need to combat obesity-related comorbidities and definitely also the corona kilos. And focusing on a diet engages your patient to look more in a holistic manner to him or herself. And probably diet um, will mainly uh, survive as an add-on treatment uh, to other uh, treatments that you administer to your patients. I definitely acknowledge all the work of Linda, but many co-workers in our university. We thank the National Psoriasis Foundation for the funding and we also thank the Flemish Patient Association for all their support in this work. Thank you very much. <laughs>